Hey, this is Brian with Radical Prep. Uh, we're doing the January 2015 uh, Integrated Algebra exam, and we're at the part two section, number 31. Here we go. Uh, number 31 says, as shown in the diagram below, a ladder 12 feet long leans against the wall and makes an angle of 72 degrees with the ground. Find to the nearest tenth of a foot the distance from the wall to the base of the ladder. So what are we actually trying to find, or what, what do they want us to find? The distance from the wall to the base of the ladder. So they want this area right here. And we can call that x. Okay. And something I like to do is I like to write down my trig functions here because we've got to write triangle. So we'll be doing trigonometry probably. So I'm going to write down so ka toa. And the next thing next thing I do is I label my sides of the triangle. So opposite the 72, opposite here is this wall, so that's opposite. There's the hypotenuse, right? It's opposite the, uh, the 90 degrees. And right here, the one that we're looking for, I'll just put narrow, that's the adjacent one. So what trig function might help us out in this scenario? We could use, well, we've got the hypotenuse that we know, and we're looking for the adjacent. So we need to know which one uses hypotenuse and adjacent. And that's cosine, okay? So we can say the cosine of 72 equals adjacent over hypotenuse. I wrote this backwards, just ignore that. Um, so cosine of 72 is going to be x all over 12. So what we do in the next step, we cross multiply, put this over 1. So the cosine of 72 times 12 equals x. And actually, let me go grab my calculator. I got it over here. Alright, we got my calculator and we have cosine of 72 times 12 gives us 3.7 and what they wanted to, the nearest tenth, 3.7. So we can say, I'll just draw an arrow. And then x equals 3.7 feet. Okay, so that's the uh, distance from from wall to base. From wall to base. Um, yeah. Okay. Um, all right, so that's pretty much it. So you can use the cosine function to help you find the distance on this one. Let's do the next one. I'm just going to clear this out. All right, so number 32. 32 says, Harlow bought a dress at a sale for 20% off the original price. The sales price of the dress was $28.80. Find the original price. So this one's a little bit difficult or different because we're not looking to put a discount on something. The discount was already put on an item, and now we have to find the original price. So one way I can write this out is that we had the original price, whatever that was, the original, times the discount, gives us what? Gives us the sales price, right? So it gives us $28.80. So let's fill in one more thing. I, I like writing it out like this just so you can see kind of like how I'm thinking about the problem. So what was the discount? It was 20% off, right? So another way of saying 20% off is really like saying you're gonna pay 80% of the price. So we're gonna actually write here, instead of 20, 0 0.80, right? Because this is what you're gonna pay. 80% of something is 28.80. So we still have original here. And to make it easier, I'll just call original x now. Right to make it simpler, so x times 0.8 equals 28.80. Okay, so I'm just going to divide by 0.8, divide by 0.8, that divides out, and we get 28.80. Uh, one second, 28.80 divided by 0.8 gives you 36. So now we can write original price 
original price of dress equals $36, okay? So that's all you're gonna do. So if I said a 40% discount, you'd multiply by 0.6. If it was a 10% discount, you'd multiply by 0.9. You're just taking the difference compared to 100. All right, what's a 50% what's a discount? Well, you pay 50, right? So 0.50. All right, and finally, number 33 says, the probability that a student owns a dog is one-third. The probability that the same student owns a dog and a cat is two-fifteenths. Determine the probability that the student owns uh, a cat or just a cat. So the first thing I would start off doing is just writing out my prob you know, my probabilities on the side here just to get organized. So probability of a dog, that's one-third. And then we have the probability of a dog and a cat and I'm gonna write it as and here and cat equals two fifteenths we want to know the probability of just having a cat we don't know what that is so we'll call it X so here's the only the big clue um, and when you do probability and you see the word and and actually means multiplication so when we have the probability of a dog and a cat that's actually the probability of a dog, so that's one-third, times the probability of a cat. And that gives me two-fifteenths. Does that make sense, everybody? Probability of a dog and a cat is the probability of just having a dog times the probability of just having a cat. So one-third times x should give me two-fifteenths. And this is nice because I'm just going to multiply. That's x over three equals two-fifteenths. And what do I do at this point? Well, cross multiply. So you get 6 equals 15x. I'm going to divide both sides by 15, by 15. And when I simplify, I get x equals 6 fifteenths. Or divide the top and the bottom by 3, 2 fifths. So I'll just move this up a little bit. So if you wanted to write a little you know, uh, message to the test maker. Actually, you know what? That's not going to move any of my stuff. So I'll just write it over here. So if you're going to write you know, a little message to the test maker, letting them know what you got, what your answer was. I used to like boxing things out so that it was easier to see. Probability of having a cat is equal to two-fifths. Or you could write out probability of having a cat. Cat equals two-fifths. Either way, correct answer. All right, thanks a lot. Uh, keep watching the videos. I hope you're doing well.